we do have some important business to take care of, and that is Josh Brown selling Schwab, which really, I don't know, I guess kind of surprised me, Josh. What, what's behind this? Don't be surprised, Judge. I, I could buy it back an hour from now. Uh, but it was, no, it was a good trade. I, when I went into it, I said, this is way overdone. It makes absolutely no sense. Schwab is a blue chip, one of the best companies in America on many levels, in addition to which we're a custody client. I have uh, uh, billions of dollars uh, at, at stake in this, in this debate. So uh, I knew it was a buy. It probably still is a buy. But any time a stock has a run like that and your intention is not to be a long-term investor, it's okay to take some off the table. So that's all I did. I mean, is that, you're, are you making any kind of a statement about, you know, where you see no, the financial no, no. sector going? This is just simply you got in right. You feel like you're getting out right. Plain and simple. Wash the hands of it. Yeah, I'll buy it. If they listen, if they want to panic, if they want to panic and start selling off some of these companies, uh, I'll, I'll take advantage. But in order to do that, I have to be ready to take advantage of it. So. Yeah. Um, so the look, other... I, I don't, I'm not interested. I got to be honest with you. I'm not interested in like First Republic or whatever. Not because there's anything wrong with it. Um, it's a different situation. Schwab got basketed in with these regional banks, of which it is not one of them. And and uh, I knew it was suspect the way they were selling this thing off. It's a very very specific opportunity. I'm not a trader. I'm an investor. But this was something that came along, and opportunistically, I wanted to take advantage of it. Okay, uh, we're, we're seeing those shares tick a bit lower uh, as we have this conversation. Now, you mentioned First Republic, which is sinking again today, which brings me to Jim Labenthal, who bought this on Monday, thinking you were getting in at, at an opportune time. Now what? Yeah, well, it's a good question. I want to start off by saying to everybody who's in this stock, this is a speculative stock now, okay? So you have to be prepared that this could go to zero. If you're not prepared for that, sell it right here, right now, okay? Now, I am not selling it. Let me be very clear. But I'm, I'm not selling it, and I'm making that decision based on an analysis of the financial statements, which includes looking down to how much do they have in liquid assets to cover deposit outflows. And based on their backing from J.P. Morgan, they can cover more than two-thirds of deposit outflows, which I think is far more than they would see. Um, I think, however, the reason this is speculative is because we've seen a run on the bank can happen to anyone. And it is, of course, possible that more than two-thirds of their deposits leave. But that should not be what happens. It should not be what the regulators want, unless they want really the regional banking system in general to just fold into the overall you, you large regret, banking system. You regret buying this stock when you did? Um, you know, it's easy to say that today when it's down. Well, because so you made such an impassioned case about buying it, you know, it's a great bank. It's I mean, you yeah. use those kinds of so, words when you described why you did it and in yeah. telling people why you thought it was so unjustly getting hit to the magnitude <clears throat> it was. Here's, here's why I don't regret it, Scott. What I like doing, I'm even going to go so far as to say I love doing, is looking at balance sheets and finding a dollar's worth of value selling for 50 cents. That's what I look to do every day. It's not always that obvious to me. Now, let me be clear. From a financial statement analysis, I think this bank is worth far more than it is today. So from that point of view, I don't regret it. What I do, I'm not going to say regret, but what I'm vexed by is the sentiment, which clearly matters in the stock and the markets here. On that, I'll close on this point. Sentiment, not just on stocks like First Republic, but the markets overall, is whipsawing back and forth. Yesterday, we're down. Today, we're up. The day before that, we were up. It's whipsawing all around. So I'm just going to go back to what I do, which is financial statement analysis, and say I'm comfortable owning the stock from there. I don't regret it. Okay. So Brenda Bangello is here um, for the first time in three years in person, okay. right? It's mm -hmm. great to have you here. It's good to great see to you. Here. So, you know, you were out on, in Palo Alto, right, mm -hmm. as all of this stuff was going down, and we talked to you about that, and here you are. And so what do you make of it now, right? You have Josh out of Schwab. You have Jim who bought First Republic. What do you make of what the market's doing at this moment? Well, I think regional banks play a really important role in our country, um, and not all of them are bad. Silicon Valley Bank had some very specific uh, risks that were being taken, but they also had a run on the bank. <laughs> That's not a normal phenomenon. Um, and, and also had a significant amount of uninsured deposits. So that's not the case with a lot of other regional banks. So I think to Jim's point, there are values that are going to be materialize out there. 
but nevertheless, I think, especially in the region of the country that I'm from, which was ground zero between Silicon Valley Bank and then also concerns about First Republic and just what was happening with the stock market, two very trusted organizations that I think um, in many respects are going to cast a little bit of a shadow on, on, on sentiment in our part of the world. Yeah. And I, I worry that it potentially it spills over onto the consumer side.